Hey Manifest Ministries family, it's Nasasha. I'm back with another video. So this is going to be the second half to the series of Puzzles to the Purpose. This is going to be on availability. Last week we did it on obedience and now this one's going to be on availability. So um, I'm, I am going to be reading from my journal today. I spent some time with God and he gave me a whole bunch so um, this video might be long but I guarantee you this this sermon really blessed me you know spending time with God it, this really ministered to me and I am very positive that it will minister to you also so um, before I start I'm just gonna go ahead and start off with prayer and then we can just begin Heavenly Father I thank you Lord I thank you, God, for bringing me here today, God, but not just me, Lord God, the one, the people, Father God, that is watching this video right now. Lord God, I thank you for taking time out of my day, Father God. I thank you for allowing me, Father God, to make myself available unto you, Father God, so I may receive your word, Lord God, and you may use me as your mouthpiece. Father God, I thank you for entrusting in me, Father God, to use me as your pen piece also, Lord. Father God, I know that we spent time with each other and I know that I wrote down what you told me to write down, Father God. But Lord, if you have anything else to add to it, Lord God, do it, Father God. Father God, I am your mouthpiece, Father God. So whatever you may say, Father God, I shall say, Lord. Whatever you write, Lord, I shall write, God. God, I thank you that you are giving us eyes to see, Father God, eyes to see your provision for your provision in our lives, your eyes to see to eyes to see your guidance in our life, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for eyes to see, to watch you, Father God, work, Father God. Eyes to continually, continuously look upon you, Father God. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that we do not look behind us, Father God, but we are continuously pressing towards the mark, Father God, pressing towards you, Lord. God, I thank you for ears to hear, Father God. I thank you, God, that ears I may hear your word today, Father God. Ears to hear the words that you minister to your children, Father God. God, we thank you, God, because your word, Father God, is pure medicine for our souls, God. Pure medicine, Father God, for our lives, oh, Father God. Father God, I thank you, God, for allowing us, Father God, to take hearken unto your word, oh, Father God, to take heed unto your word, oh, Lord God. Father God, I thank you, God for wanting to minister to your children, Father God. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for allowing your children to know, Father God, that you are willing to be in their lives. You are wanting to provide provision over their lives, Father God. You are the God who sees. You are the God who hears, Father God. Father God, I thank you that you not only take provision over our lives, Father God, but the generational lives also. You take heed over the lives of our children's children's children, Father God. You are a generational God, Father God, that not only blesses the first generation, Father God, but you are a generational God that provides generational blessings, O Lord God. Father God, we pray that you continuously teach us to have faith in you, Father God, a faith that is unwavering, Lord God. Father God, we ask that you continuously, Father God, show us availability and obedience unto you, Father God. Father God, you entrusted Abraham this gift, O oh Lord God. Father God, you called Abraham, Lord, and he heeded the voice that you spoke to him, Father God. He heeded your word, O oh Father God. And Father God, we thank you, Lord God, because we can see, Father God, from the, prov the provision that he had in your life, Father God, from him, Father God, from that seed, Father God, came the Savior, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, because you are doing great works in our lives and our children's lives. Continuously teach us, Father God, how, how to renew our minds, Father God, so we may see the way you see, so we may hear the way you hear. Spiritual eyes, Father God, and spiritual ears. I thank you. Amen. So, this is titled Availability. And I wanted to look up the meaning of availability first. And the meaning of the word to be available means able to be used 
or obtained. I just want you to just say that one more time to yourself. Able to be used or obtained. To be available to God means to be easily obtained. Able to be used by Him. And many times in this life, we get off course. We find ourselves lost and off track. And we become, and we end up becoming unavailable to our calling. Unavailable to the calling of the voice of the Lord. And it's so sad because when we become unavailable to God, once we begin to kind of slip off and we start to not to heed the voice of the Lord, anything that sounds sweet, anything that looks sweet will be desirable for us. We will go after those things. And that's why it is important to continuously stay clinging to God and asking God for wisdom, discernment, understanding, spiritual ears and spiritual eyes. Because if you are just looking at this world through a physical point of view or you're just listening to certain things through a physical point of view, you are easily, you are going to be easily, easily, why can I not speak today? You're going to be easily able to be deceived. You're going to be easily able to be deceived. And then once we become, you know, less available to God, we are humans, you know, we are instruments of praise. That's what we were created for. So if you're not praising God with your life, you're going to be praising something else. If you're not making yourself available to God, you are going to be making yourself available to something else. It's inevitable. You will end up making yourself either available to people situations, scenarios, and most of the time, the things we are available to in this world, we are wrongly available to them. If they didn't come to God and you are make, if they didn't come from God and you are sitting there making yourself available to them, you're walking in a dangerous path. Like I said in my last video, you know, we are adding things in our lives that God never said add and we are subtracting things in our lives that God never said subtract. That's why you have to continuously just stay clinging to God and seeking his provision in your life. He is the one that has the big picture. He's the one that sees it all. I don't know about you guys, but I can't see into the future. I but I know my God, I know my God can see into the future. He is the God that can see into the future. He is the God that is a generational God. He not only takes, you know, your life. He's not taking just your life into accountability, but he's taking your future children's lives into accountability, their children's life into accountability. And when we make ourselves available to these things, we wonder why we find ourselves so drained we become drained we become tired we become what is the word unmotivated to do anything we're sitting here pouring ourselves into people situations places jobs that God never told us to do and the reason why we're becoming so drained when we're pouring ourselves into these things is because these things that you're entrusting yourself into, they can't pour back into you the way God can. These things cannot provide you with happiness. These things cannot provide you with strength. These things cannot provide you with peace the way God can. God says, my peace surpasses all understanding. He didn't say this job or this job will provide you peace that surpasses all understanding no he said my peace so when you take unto his peace when you take unto his strength then you can go out to the world with his strength and his peace and nothing peace and nothing shall be able to shake you <laughs> we're easily able to be placed on call for a job but not on call for God. My dear, it takes availability. Without the provision of God, this world will break you down. The Lord prepares the ones he places and he places the ones he prepares. I want us just to just 
eat on that for a bit. <laughs> the Lord prepares the ones he places, and he places the ones he prepares. But, my child, my friend, my brother, my sister, are you available for the preparation? Mm. Okay, so we're going to continue. To be available to something, to be available to God, you must trust Him. Ask yourself this, where does my trust lie? Where does it lie? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read in Romans 12, 2. Okay, so I'm going to read in Romans 12, 2. This is in the New King James Version. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So honey, you are not going to find out the will of God for your life if you, can, if you keep messing around with this world. This world will keep its snares on you, but it's up to you to make yourself available to God because he is willing. He's willing to let you know that, yes, I have a plan for you. God says, I know the plans that I have for you and they are plans to prosper you. They are not plans of evil. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so I wrote after this, um, the verse, for when your mind is renewed, your heart follows suit. It's a mindset. First, you have to decide, okay, yes, God, I am going to make myself available to you. God, I want to be obedient to you. It's a mindset. Because your heart is going to follow after the things that it's used to doing. Your heart's going to follow after the things that it's used to you know, obtaining its happiness from, you know what I mean? If you are finding your happiness in people, if you are finding your happiness in a job or a scenario, those things do not last forever. I don't know about you, but I want my happiness to last forever. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is not a wavering thing. It is not a wavering strength. But Joe, Mo, and Bo, their joy and their happiness, they're just people. Okay, that job, that job may not be there forever. People get laid off. People get fired all the time. Start, you know, putting your trust, start putting your faith into something that does not waver, which is God himself. So once you make that decision... You know, to say, Jesus, yes, come into my heart, Lord God. I want to trust you. Doing it my way has never worked. Doing it my way has, you know, led me hurt. Doing it my way some days, you know, is good and other days is bad. But when you put your trust into the Lord, his strength abounds much. And it is there forever for you to dip inside of yourself because God pours in you. And when you dip inside of yourself, you are able to pull from a strength. that no, So no matter what situations you go through, you are able to pull from a strength and be strengthened and have peace. So after the, you know, the verse, you know, not to be conformed to this world, renew your mind. The Greek word for mind is noose. And I always like, you know, searching up Greek words for things because you can really get a beautiful, deep, deeper meaning with them. So the Greek word for mind is noose. So the Greek word for mind is noose. So for the believer, the mind is the organ of receiving God's thoughts through faith. Because as you daily begin to renew your mind, so it's not just a one day thing. You cannot be wavering on your faith. You cannot be wavering on your decision. You know what I mean? The word of God, there's a verse in the Bible and it's talking about, you know, wavering faith. Do not allow your faith to waver like the ocean does where the wind blows and the, the waves go this way and the wind blows and the waves go that way. Do not let your circumstances change your faith. Do not let your circumstances change where your strength is coming from. Because if your circumstances are changing you, that means your faith, your hope, and your happiness is founded in your circumstances. And that is a lie. It takes a daily renewing of your mind. So because as you, so I wrote, as you daily begin to renew your mind for the things of God, 
The pattern of thinking the world has been had okay. Sorry. As you daily begin to renew your mind for the things of God, the pattern of thinking this world has begins to become undesirable for you. And the desires of your heart begin to yearn for heavenly things. The desires of your spirit begin to outweigh the desires of your flesh. So, to be available to God, you must trust God. And to trust God means to know God. When you trust a person, you know their capabilities their character, their desires towards you. You don't just trust a random person. I'm not talking about, you know, just like a friend that you've only been friends with for a little bit. I'm talking about true trust. When you trust someone, that means you know who this person is. You know their desires towards you. (laughs) And I wrote, And the Lord forbid me to try and place you in a box, God, and try to describe you with simple human words. Because God, your capabilities are innumerable. And I want to go to Ephesians 3, 20 to 21. So now Ephesians 3, 20 to 21 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. So Lord, your capabilities are innumerable. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. These are the characters of God. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. To trust him means to know his character. Your character is indescribably astonishing. You are the God who is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. I always get tongue-tied with those. (laughs) His thoughts towards us cannot even be counted. He desires all things good for his children. Psalms 139, 17 to 18. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I can count them, they will be more in number than the sand. God is thinking about you. These are his characters towards you. When you trust in him, know that he is able to do above all that we ask or think. Know that his thoughts towards you are are thoughts that cannot even be numbered. They are thoughts that cannot be counted. And every single thought that he has towards you is a good thought. Psalms 45, not 45, but 40 verse 5. Many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works, which you have done, and your thoughts towards us cannot be counted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they will be more than can can be numbered. Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the thoughts that I think towards you says the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope (laughs) then you will call upon me and go pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart God says I am willing Trust in me and I am willing. I have thoughts for you that you have not even thought about. (laughs) The box that you are trying to place me in, I supersede that box. I am able to do abundantly more than you ask, more than you think. The thoughts that God, the way that God wants to provide for us, the way that God wants to excel us, the way that God wants to expand us has not even entered into our thought process thank you lord so now that was just the introduction so now i want to get really into the meat of this so this brings me to matthew 4 18 and this is where jesus was walking on the shore of galilee and he called two young men to drop all that they were doing and to follow him 
So let's go ahead and we're going to turn to, let's see, it is Matthew 418. Do not let your past affect your effectiveness. And Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. No pun intended. <laughs> they immediately left their nets and followed him. Wow. So the Bible says that these two young men, they immediately followed him. Immediately meaning there was no second guessing. There was no thought about it. Their Lord was calling them. Their God had a calling for them. And they immediately jumped to it. Huh. They immediately dropped their net and followed him. Now, when I first read this, you know, it's beautiful. You know what I mean? Like, Jesus called them and they immediately went. My first question was, why? Why? If I was at my job... And a man came to me and said, stop what you're doing. We're going to go catch some souls. Would you drop Would you drop your livelihood? Would you drop your job and would you go? But that's the thing. What is your trust placed in? Is your trust placed in your job? Or is your trust placed in God? Now here's another beautiful thing. You have to be so close and connected to God that you can look at a person, you can look at a place, and you can look at an opportunity when it arises and say, oh yes, oh yes, this is my God, this is nothing else, this is not works of anything else, this has to be the hand of God. See, it takes availability to know the character of God. When you begin to spend time with God, you begin to know his character. When you spend countless hours and, you know, just knowing God and just diving into his word and getting to know him more and more every day, you build a relationship. If you can, out of a crowd of people, you can tell your mother huh, out of a crowd of people because you know what she looks like. Out of a crowd of people, you can tell your son, your daughter, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, out of a crowd of people because you know what they look like. That is how close we must become to God. That is how close we must get to God. To where we can look at a person, a situation, or an opportunity and know that the character of God is on this. He has signed off with his name and his signature. This has to be God. So when they heard Jesus say, Stop what you're doing. <laughs> I'll make you fish as a man. Who else talked like that? Who else would have said something like that? That had to be the son of God. That had to be God calling them to a bigger purpose. To a bigger destiny. This had to be God, you know, coming to them and saying, It is time to excel. This is time. It is time to expand. It is time to expand you too. It is time to expand my church. It is time to expand my body. The body of Christ. It is time. The Lord Jesus said, you know, there the harvest is plenty, but who's going to harvest it? Where's the harvesters? Where's the workers? God is calling us to something bigger. And that's why so many of us are deceived. You know, we are still children of God, but so many, you know, the word of God says that my people perish for a lack of wisdom. And it's not a lack of wisdom because God never told us. It is not a lack of wisdom because God withheld the information, because he withheld the knowledge and understanding. The word of God says to ask God because he is a generous God. And if you ask him, he will freely give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So why is it that if we have a God that is freely available and wanting to tell us these things, why is it that his people are still perishing because of lack of knowledge? It's because we don't sit there and we don't make ourselves available to ask him. It is about availability. It's about getting to know him. He is willing. Why are you not willing? God is not the God of confusion. He will make it plain for you. 
if you are sitting there and wondering like god is this from you is this man from you is this woman from you is is this situation for me was this job opportunity something that you want me to take on he will give you your confirmation he will give you your confirmation and if you never got that confirmation it's because you that can either be your answer or it's because you never really sat down and prayed and fasted on it. God says, knock and the door shall be open for you. Ask and it shall be given. <laughs> they heard the voice of Jesus and knew this was from God. So I wrote down John 10, 27. So I'm going to go ahead and read that here right now. And it says, this is Jesus speaking, and he is saying, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Woo! I'm going to read that one more time. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Wow. Wow. Wow, there's so many layers to this. I can, I'm about to go off course and go on to a whole new, th another sermon. Wow, this, this, th just that alone. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me. Wow, that's just deep. That's just beautiful. Hmm. <laughs> yes Lord don't ever think because you know we are human <laughs> we are human okay God I'm going to speak the Lord just speak through me this is what God is saying some of you <laughs> have gotten off course <laughs> but God is not mad at you it's going to be okay. But God is saying, come back to me. Are you done yet? Are you done doing things on your own? Are you done heeding the voice of the world? My child, you were never meant to go that place. My child, you were never to be with that person. You never asked me in my opinion about it. I have so much more for you. Why are you so content? in your contentment why are you so content in the pit do you know that I am able to raise you up you shall mount up on wings as eagles that is where your calling is your calling is not in the pit I am the one that's able to dust you off and clean you off Hear unto my voice again. My voice is within you. It is still and it is calm. I will not compete for I am a high God. I am not going to compete huh, with the things that you are freely giving your attention to. <laughs> God is a gentleman and he's not going to push himself off on you he is here when you when you come to him he is freely here his sheep hear his voice and he knows every single one of them even the ones that went afar off even the ones that try to go on another path he knows exactly where you are just like the prodigal son, the prodigal son came back to his father and the father, you know, dusted him off and set a party. It was a celebration. Once you are a child of God, once you say, yes, Jesus, I need you. You are never lost. You are still a child of God. God is not mad at you. He misses you. Do not, you know... Um, I was in Bible study the other day. Wow, this is beautiful. <laughs> and I wrote some, what was it? Let me get it real quick. Here it is. 
the enemy will bring condemnation meaning he will make you think god's mad at you you can't go back might as well stay in your situation or you can't do that you're not strong enough you're not you know you're not smart enough you can't do that the enemy will bring condemnation he will make you think oh look at the past look at the things that you did in the past you know what i mean your past does not define your future because last time I checked because what Jesus Christ done for me that is my past my past does not define my future so the enemy brings condemnation but remember there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus but the Holy Spirit brings conviction Meaning that you can get better. Meaning that there is a way out of this. The Holy Spirit is just bringing conviction to bring your wrongdoings to the light. But he's not condemning you. He's saying, okay, my child, I know you've done this. But because I sent my only son, it is all covered up. Let's get up. Let's dust off your shoes. Let's try again. But this time, try again with me. And, I'll sh and you're going to see. You're going to see. A better outcome hmm. so I wrote when Jesus called the brothers he called them at a specific time hmm. so I think that's kind of funny like you know when you look at the character of God you know that God is an on time God he's a specific God that's why we say your timing Lord not ours because <laughs> that is so beautiful. Everything he does is at a specific time. So I was reading this and it was funny to me how Jesus, you know, he didn't call the brothers while the nets were still in the boats. He didn't call the brothers while the nets were still in their grass. But he called the brothers and he said, follow me when the nets were already thrown into the ocean. He called them when the nets were out of their reach. So I was, you know, spending time with God and just asking God, okay, God, like nets, this has a deeper meaning to it. This does not just mean nets. You did not just call them at a specific time. Like the word of God is so beautiful because you can read it. And you can read it over and over and over again. And you can get so many different meanings from one little verse. This is about, like, this is so beautiful. This is Matthew 4, 18. This is one verse. And it has such a deep meaning to it. So I'm asking God, I'm like, okay, God, like, by the word, by nets, what do you mean? Because you called them specifically at a specific time when the nets were not in their grasp anymore. So God said to me, you know, if we look at the net in a metaphoric way, in a symbolic way, we now see that the net is symbolic for life. It's symbolic for life in general. It's like playing a game of chance. Many people are missing out on the big picture that God is trying to reveal to them because they rather do things their own way and cast nets their and cast their nets meaning make a decision for themselves without the provision of God so basically you know what I'm trying to say here is you're casting your net you're making decisions in life you're casting your net into the big deep ocean you know, you can't see into the water. You're just, you know, you're trusting your own judgment and you're thinking to myself, okay, this is the spot. I'm going to do it right here. I'm going to cast my net. Whatever, whatever I get here, that's it. I'm just going to take it for what it is. So you cast your net in your own decision. And God is saying, why cast it in your own will? Why are you doing, why are you doing life in your own strength? You reap what you sow. Why are you doing life in your own strength without my provision? 
you don't know what so you don't know what doors you're knocking on you don't know what you're asking for you're you're just going to the motions of life you're like the ocean you are getting t thrown to and fro because you you're just living life day to day that is not what god has called his children to do he did not call us just to live life day to day without him And we wonder why, when you just throw your net into the ocean, you get nothing but seaweed. You get nothing that's beneficial to you. You don't get fish. You don't get what you expected to get. <laughs> and many people, it's sad, they've gotten stuck in this sick mindset of, well, this is the hand that I was dealt. Might as well deal with it. You know, this is a lot that I got. This is life. So is life. Oh, poor me. Oh, well. I'm just going to take what the world gives me. And God is calling his church, his body out of the poor me mindset. Do you not know that you are the righteousness of God? So I want to go to Deuteronomy 28:13. And it says, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. Beneath, If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them. Wow. And if you are careful to observe them. So that means, don't just sit there and read the word of God and be like, okay, cool. Observe it. Allow it to fill you up. Allow it to write, be written on your heart so you can dip down deep within you and say, no, this is the truth. When the enemy tries to come up against you, you can say, no, this is the truth. This is what my God has told me. This is what my God has called me to do. Do not allow thoughts that come into your head to discourage you against the truth that God has already spoken to you. Feelings may pass away, but God always stays the same. Thoughts come and go, but God is always here and he always stays the same. And his words never come back to him void. Follow God. Stop trying to do things your own way, including what he has called you to do. Do not move, my brother and sister, unless he moves. So I wrote, when Jesus called these two men, he called them when they got in the position to follow him. When the nets were cast out into the sea. Spiritually, they were in the position of trusting God. If you look at this spiritually, when they cast their nets into the sea, they are now in a position where the decision is not in their hands anymore. It's out in the sea. The decision is not in their boats anymore. It's, it's in God's hands now. That is the position that we must have. It is having humbleness unto God. Having humbleness unto him and, you know, just trusting him. Even if our flesh is like, no, I don't want to do it. <laughs> our thoughts is not his, is, are not his thoughts. His thoughts are higher than ours. His ways are not our ways. His ways are higher than ours. Have humbleness unto him. Place yourself in a position. Like I said, it starts with the mindset and then your heart will follow suit. Change your mind. Renew your mind each day and say, no flesh. We are going to, so I am serving the Lord. That is it. And your heart will begin to, as God begins to pour into you, you will begin to desire him more. Because the, the, the peace that you feel when you are with him. <clears throat> sorry the joy and the happiness that you feel when you're with him and when you come out of his presence and you go into the world you begin to desire him more and more and more so when they cast their nets into the ocean spiritually they were in a position of trusting god they were probably out there fishing all day not catching enough, only catching small fish, probably catching seaweed. But Jesus came at the right moment and basically said, all right, are you done doing things your way? Are you, are you done? Are you ready to, huh? Are you let, are you ready to let go of this? I'm in my car. Are you ready to let go of the steering wheel? 
Are you ready to let go? What is that thing that steers the ship? Is it called an udder? I don't want to be mistaken with a cow part. Rudder. <laughs> it's a rudder, not an udder. <laughs> okay, that was that was funny. Okay. But basically, you you want God to be your steering wheel and your rudder. You want him to be the one that's taking control of your life, taking the reins of your life. Because he is the one that has the map. You do not have the map. He is the one that has the map and he is the one that knows the way. He is the one that already, you know, sees the roadblocks. He's the one that already sees the nails in the road. <laughs> he took those nails for you. Wow. Wow. So Jesus came at the right time and he said, are you done now? Are you done doing things your way? Now it's time to do things my way. Follow me and I will make you fishers and men. I know God and I know that when you cast his word, so just like the net, when you cast his word, it will not come back void it is time we as a church stop reflecting on what hurt us yesterday even reflecting on good old times if you keep looking back on the road of the past you'll wreck going towards your future there's nothing wrong with you know looking back in the past and you know being ministered to by your testimony by the things that God has done for you but so many people are stuck in the past that they're too afraid to go to the future they're too afraid to trust God to take them to where they want to go even mentally you know and it's a battlefield of the mind you know what I mean you don't allow your thoughts to keep you from progressing mentally and physically don't allow your physical situation to stop you from progressing you mentally and physically